All right, so any episode with the GOAT, Gojo in it, is always going to be great. Uh, either, it doesn't matter if he's kicking ass or if he's just sitting there chilling, being a goofball. If Gojo's in the episode, it is awesome. And there was no different with this episode. So we get to see Gojo just chilling around with Nanami, you know, just fucking around, being a total goofball. And basically he's like, well, I didn't mean it that way when I said Yuji was going to face tougher trials, you know, referring to having a fight against Mahito. But, uh, you know, he's like, but I'm glad I left you in charge, Nanami. And he's like, oh, by the way, what'd you do with that finger? And he's like, oh, I gave it to the higher-ups. If I'd left it with you, you'd just let him eat it. Which plays into uh, what the demon or the curses said earlier in the or a part of the episode where they're all chilling at the hot spring and Ghetto is speaking on the higher ups of the Jujutsu world not wanting the vessel to consume the fingers or you know I think that's what I think they said he don't want him to consume the fingers because I'm assuming because he'd be too powerful to take then that they're probably just trying to get all the fingers together and then executing him uh, I could be missing something on that note but that's what it's it seems like here but ghetto i'm still convinced is one of the higher ups because how would he be privy to this information if he wasn't for one and secondly later in the episode when gojo's talking to uh the leader of the sister school i forget her name but he says that there is a traitor amongst their school that is working with the curses and he wants her to you know investigate her school so that kind of really starts to put things in a place that ghetto is actually one of the higher ups either that or he knows somebody of the higher ups that he's contriving with but being that he's supposedly human i assume that he is the said traitor that Gojo is referring to. You know, and then we finally get to see the new school, or the students from the new school, uh, that is led by uh, Maki's sister, Mai. Well, not necessarily led by them, but that's kind of the character, her and Toto are the two characters that we are introduced to. Uh, so we get to see them have a stare down, and that's when Gojo brings Itadori back and reveals him to everybody for a little comedy moment. Um, I was kind of hoping that it would be like one of those, you know, Yu Hakusho style moments where it's like he comes in during the big fight or whatever out of nowhere when nobody's expecting him and they really need help. And he comes in and starts whooping ass, but when Gojo's involved, all expectations are out of the window. You know, this is the way it is. And this also comes as a surprise of the principal who Gojo just straight up just pretty much gets in his face, gives him the bird, and tells him to suck his dick and kiss his ass, basically, is what he does. Um, he doesn't actually do that, but metaphorically, that's what Gojo's doing. Because he's like, I don't give a fuck. I saved the vessel. I'm the fucking goat. Kiss my ass. Gojo... I love that motherfucker so much. He is hands down the best character in this show. And for me, that's right next to Nanami as second best character. Just because I love Nanami. He's fucking awesome. But yeah, I mean, other than that, not a lot really happens in this episode. There isn't really no fighting or any action that's really toned down. Kind of just, you know, easing us off of what happened in the last arc and slowly building up the next one, you know? Uh, that's really to be expected. One thing to note, though, is that when the other team is doing their planning for the fight, because apparently they're supposed to chase around a second grade curse, and there's supposed to be a bunch of third and fourth grade or whatever, 
curses running around and you know it's like whoever by sundown either you your team exercises the second grade curse or if not if nobody gets it then whoever exercises the, the most of the smaller curses will be deemed the winner but as they're making their plan the principal wants them to kill Itadori <sighs> Like, we know you want to kill Itadori, but isn't the purpose to use Itadori to collect the fingers to then kill Sukuna? Which we know that they're too afraid to do so because they can't tango with Sukuna, so that's when they tried to kill out the vessel earlier. But, you know, he's only got like, what, five or six fingers or something like that? There's still a lot more Sukuna out there that somebody got their hands on could really fuck shit up. Um, but, you know, do you really think, knowing that Sukuna is inside his body, and, you know, do you really think Sukuna is going to allow himself to be humiliated like that? I totally see Sukuna coming out sometime in this fight or in the next one. Because Megami mentions that if he took on the entire other team and they didn't use any curse energy, that each story would beat them all. Um. Yeah. And if, you know, I just, I can't shake the feeling that, you know, Sukuna is going to somehow be revealed in this, this uh, exchange event fight. Because, mainly, you can make the argument that Sukuna says before he doesn't care if his body dies or whatever. You know, well, maybe, I would say it'll probably go most along with his pride. You know, he's like getting embarrassed and threatened to kill and stuff. And he's just like, nah fam, ain't happening, let's throw them hands. You don't fuck with Sukuna. Uh, I do, I do see Sukuna making an appearance and wiping the floor with everybody. If for no other reason than to just cause problems with the plot in terms of, well, shit, Gojo, you done fucked up, you know, uh, you know, just to add a little bit of drama, maybe even make it more aware of the pact that's already been established, because if they're trying to kill, you know, Yuji now, and this happens, you can only imagine what they're going to fucking do to him afterwards. So, yeah. Again, not a lot happened in this episode. Uh, it was really just a lot of setup. You know, showing some of the uh, deeds behind everything. But we see that blue hair girl that was in love, like, basically gawking over Gojo a few episodes ago. The attendant to the principal. She seems apprehensive to go after and kill Yuji, and it looks like that Momo chick, the little blonde haired girl, it doesn't look like she's really all keen on the idea either, like the other two are. And Toto just, like he kicks down the door and threatens to leave, and he says he's just doing to go, go watch that Takata-chan, or whatever her name is, on TV. But I think that they were making it obvious that he does not agree with what they are wanting to do. That he's probably somewhat rather disgusted that they would try and do that to somebody who's basically kind of just thrown into this against their will. So, yeah, I'm still really liking his character. But, yeah, it's a, uh, a lot of moving parts are starting to come into place a little bit with the reveal, well, not really reveal, but kind of subtle hint that like Ghetto is the traitor inside the school. Or at least is connected to said traitor. And then, you know, the principal kind of mobilizing to have Yuji killed during the said tournament. If you want to call it that. So, yeah. Um, this is going to be pretty hype to see where this goes. Um, 
I expect the villains to really take a back seat for the first portion of this arc, maybe come in later on. But I think this is going to be kind of like what happened with Attack on Titan, seeing a lot of like the inner struggles of the political structure, so to speak, um, kind of starting to unravel and reveal themselves, and maybe uh, start to see some alliances be formed against the school's higher-ups. That's going to be interesting to see. Uh, because, I mean, at the end of the day, none of them are going to want to fuck with Gojo. Hands down. None of them want to fuck with Gojo by themselves. And then maybe that actually leads into the point that after this, maybe Ghetto, assuming he is the traitor inside the school, will actually convince some of them to help the curses seal away Gojo. That's always a possibility, too. I wouldn't put it past the principal, for sure. But that's all I got on this one, you know. What do you think? Did you enjoy the episode? Like I said, it was chill, laid back. Nothing really crazy happened. Just some background stuff getting revealed a little bit and some setup for the next, uh, for this next arc. But yeah, what do you think about them wanting to kill Itadori? Do you think Sukuna's gonna make an appearance? you think Sukuna's gonna allow his vessel to get whooped around like that? I think he's too prideful to allow that to happen no matter what he says. Sorry. But that and what do you think about the other team? Do you think there's going to be some kind of discourse um, between them? Because they all are certainly not on board with this plan, even if it's subtle. Do you think that's going to play some kind of role in it? And then, you know, ultimately, what do you think about uh, the traitor? Do you think it's Ghetto? Uh, I certainly do, at the very least, think he's at least connected to said traitor. But I'm, at this point, almost 100% confirmed that he is the traitor. Uh, so yeah, you know, what are your thoughts on that? And uh, do you think that the principal could be swayed to possibly help the curses steal away Gojo? Because he certainly wants to be rid of Gojo, in my opinion. I think they all really want to be rid of Gojo because he threatens their overall plan. Which, you know, what do you think? Throw your theories down, comment, like, subscribe. We'll see you in the next